Hello everybody. Welcome to the Backyard Vegetable Gardening Channel. Today is December the 28th, 2023. Sure hope you're having a great day. Well, let's get on with it. Talk about starting seeds. A lot of people this time of year, they're pretty uh, pretty anxious to get things going. But uh, if you're like me, and I know a lot of you are, uh, you're still struggling to figure out when to get your seeds started. Get it out there in the garden as quick as you can. So today, that's what we're going to talk about. Now, I'm going to try my best to stick with notes because I'm going to try to do you a solid tutorial on how and when to get your seeds started. And what I did was I went through this, made this little list as I was planning to start my seeds, which I'll be doing very soon. It's about time to get the onions started. So that, well, let me say that better. It's time to get the bulb and onions started really soon. That way they've got plenty of time to grow and bulb on out. So we got some big onions uh, this summer. The three most essential things that you need to know when starting your seeds is your hardiness zone, your first and last, your average first and last frost dates, and whether you're growing cool season or warm season plants. Now, that hardiness zone, a lot of people are in, uh, unfamiliar with, uh, it's called the USDA Plant Hardiness Zone Map. And what that is, uh, the USDA has uh, taken the last 30 years worth of data and they have looked to see how cold it gets in certain areas. Where we live in North Carolina, uh, we just got uh, redesignated, and most everybody did in the US, but we got redesignated from 7A to 7B, meaning that we are now on average five degrees uh, warmer when it comes to those extreme low temperatures. And that's all it is. When I think of the, the plant hardiness zone, I basically think of two things. Number one, it helps me know what type of perennial I can grow and it will survive during our winters. Um, I don't have to really use that a lot. That information, um, it's valuable. But uh, as far as uh, your annual crops go, it really, in my mind, it really doesn't have a benefit. But uh, we know like right now, good example. Outside we have grapes. We have uh, one, two, three variety of grapes. We have two varieties of blackberries and one, two, three, at least three varieties of blueberries. All of those will handle our weather, our winters very well. They'll go dormant and then when spring comes, they will go, but they won't die. So if you take this citrus that's grown in the office, we have one navel orange and two of a certain variety of lemons. I can't remember what they are. Um, they wouldn't handle it well outside. Right now, um, they could survive, but the minute we got a good hard freeze, uh, that'd be the end of them. They're, they're not made to do it. And we bought these plants knowing that. Uh, they'll probably spend all of their life in containers, and that's just fine. But um, uh, that's real, really what I think about uh, with the plant hardiness thing. Um, when it comes on down to it, the the plant hardiness zones um, will let you know that if you're growing a plant and that plant is can handle a certain temperature, you can use the information in your hardiness zone to know whether you need to use covering or whether really you want to go through the trouble at all. And um, your average first last frost dates and cool warm crops. So we're going to use that information to create a simple little plan to schedule the most ideal time for when to get those seeds started so we can get them out in the garden as quick as we can. Be sure to stick around to the end. I'll give you a few more tips on how to get out there even quicker. We done discussed the, the plant hardiness zone. And all you have to do is to go to the USDA website, type in your zip code, and the application will show you a map. It'll start out with a national map, 
and you can use that information just fine. But if you want to put in your zip code, it'll drill in and it'll tell you exactly what zone you're in. And like I said, we're in zone 7B. And it, our winters are pretty mild. Now, don't get me wrong, they're cold enough that we can't, uh, we can't grow lettuce unless we're going to put it under cover or something like that. We're certainly not going to try to grow something like citrus. But I know some people at the coast who are. They, they're growing citrus year-round. They do have it covered. They do put lights in there in the wintertime to keep it from being damaged. But um, the climate's just a little bit uh, milder that way, so they can do that. Us over here, in, right uh, at the foot of them mountains, um, we don't have that luxury. So we've got the hardiness zone and your average first and last frost dates. Now, to me, this is probably the most important thing you need to know before you get planning when to start germinating your seeds. There's nothing more discouraging than having worked to get your seeds started, or even if you just went to the produce stand and you picked up some seeds, some plant starts, and you got them out there in the garden a little too early, and a frost came. And if you're growing your tomatoes, your peppers, your cucumbers, anything like that, if you've ever experienced it, you know there's nothing more discouraging than what happens to those plants after you've just got them in the ground. We lost all of our first plant in the cucumbers this year, and there's nothing I could have done about it. We had them uh, just as protected as we could. It just got too cold. Uh, these warm season plants, they do not like cold. In fact, some of them won't even germinate till the temperature gets 60 degrees. And you know, indoors we've got, uh, we've got uh, climate control and that's a wonderful thing. We've got seed starting mats, those are great things. But when you get those little, little, little plants outside, uh, you don't have that anymore. And you could, I guess you could still warm the ground with some kind of uh, blanket material, some mulch or some uh, cover the, the beds with poly, and we do all of that. But um, you want to make sure you know when these first and last, uh, average first and last frost dates are. So don't forget, uh, hang around to the end. We'll talk a little bit more about how to get those plants out safely in the garden a little bit sooner, or at least as soon as you can. So the last thing is the cool and the cool and warm crops. Um, we touched on that a little bit, but a lettuce likes to grow in much cooler weather than a tomato or a cucumber or a pepper. And that's just the way it is. There's no use even trying to uh, argue with the fact it just that's the way they are. They like different temperatures, soil temperatures particularly. Lettuce, for instance, uh, you put it out there 45, 50 degrees and it's just gonna do wonderful. It's just gonna do wonderful. Uh, your tomatoes, not so hot. Uh, if it gets any cooler than 45 degrees, your tomatoes are gonna let you know because those plants are gonna start dying they don't like being in the cold. Um, you can, of course, extend it like we said with the poly, but we're talking about getting our seeds started. So now you know when those last uh, average frost dates are, you can plan when to start growing your seeds. And what we do is we start counting back. Now I'll roll in a picture of some seed packets, but I've got some here and we'll open one up and if this don't do good, I will cut it out completely and use the picture. But here's a, a little seed package you can buy just about anywhere. Uh, it's a Chadwick Cherry Tomato. It says it's an heirloom variety. On the back of your seed packet, there's going to be this little map. Now, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but you can see right there by the tip of my finger, there's a little map. And that little map's got a bunch of colors in it. And if I look to where that color meets up with about where I live, it says 
that these could be planted in the ground from April to June. Um, if I was to look a little bit further, no, this one doesn't really tell me all that. Yeah, it does. It says 85 days to harvest. Now, I know where I live that I have 172 days on average of good, warm growing season. So that's plenty of time if I get it out there. But what if I wanted to get started quicker? Instead of waiting until the end of April, because if I look where my average last frost date is, I believe it was, let's see, uh, climate.gov says my average last frost date is April 19th. But the almanac says it's April 27th. Now, I typically try to get mine out there about the second or third week of April. That's just a rule of thumb that I use to go by. Um, most of the time we do well and it doesn't hurt us hardly any. Um, but there was that time, like I told you with those cucumbers, it just, uh, it was just too early and it was okay. Uh, cucumbers germinate pretty fast, they grow fast. Uh, in fact, you can get several plants of cucumbers in your summer garden if that's what you really hope to do. For me, uh, I'm telling you, just a few cucumber plants does us. We get sick of cucumbers. I've tried my, just a little confession, folks. I've tried real hard to like cucumbers. I don't like cucumbers. I love pickles, dill pickles, sweet pickles. I love them both. I've never liked a cucumber. And while we're on the confessional route, tomatoes are the same way. I love ketchup. I love salsa. I love lots and lots of pastes uh, and soups. Um, but I'm not a fan of tomatoes. I've tried as many of these tomatoes as I've grown. I've gone, went out there almost every day and grabbed some variety of plant that I don't like too good, some variety of vegetable, and I just haven't got those things conquered yet. And I don't think I ever will, just to be honest with you, but it's all right. So uh, knowing which plants to start, you know, lettuce and broccoli, I've got it growing out there right now. Now my lettuce is covered up, but my broccoli isn't. My broccoli is doing really good. Um, it's been very cold a few nights, uh, dropped in the low, low twenties. In fact, I think we got in the teens a few weeks ago, but now the nights are, um, in the thirties and in the forties. I think we're going to start slipping back in the twenties this week, but the broccoli's doing fine. Um, as far as the lettuce that's growing out there, that was an experiment. I germinated seed out there late in the season, um, done, um, cold enough to where I had to put poly over and, and it seems to be germinating finally. Uh, I don't know. I thought about taking some of what's behind me and putting it out there, but we've had a few days of rain and it's, it's pretty messy. Now the garden's not too awful bad, but it's what all that's involved getting to the garden. So I didn't really want to go through all that, but maybe this week that might be on our radar. Don't know yet. All right. So we, we know we've got a plant hardiness zone that tells us our extreme colds. We've got our, um, our average first and last frost dates, and then whether it's a cool season or a warm season plant. Now, um, on these, some of these plants, um, these seed packets, it'll tell you when, um, what type of temperatures that um, these plants are, are like the best. Not all of them do. In fact, I've got to notice that a lot of the seed packets these days don't uh, provide uh, nearly as much information as uh, what they used to, and that's okay. Um, you just need to know that uh, if you're growing a plant for the first time, you're not experienced with it, there are cool season crops and warm season crops. You just need to take a little time. You can do an internet search. In fact, I'll do that and I'll throw a clip in and I'll show you. There's lots of little charts out there that'll help you. So the point of the video is, yes, we want to help you learn to plan when to start your seeds. We also want to encourage you to know that even though there is a little legwork sometimes, it's very easy and you shouldn't be discouraged. I remember when I got started just a few years ago, I knew absolutely nothing about growing food. 
I was ashamed of myself. We all know what happened uh, around 2019, 2020, and all that stuff. Um, out of all the things that I've taught my children, and I've taught and tried to teach my children a good number of things, whether it's just to clean up around the house, to paint with a paintbrush, to mow, to weed eat, to pull weeds, to we remodeled this building we're in right now completely. Uh, the only thing we didn't do ourselves was uh, the HVAC work, and that's because I didn't really want to take the time to learn how to do it. So. Um, I've always thought up until that point that we did a good job giving our children a very well-rounded education, not just uh, mathematics and literature and things like that, but life skills. And then when I started hearing about people, they couldn't go to the grocery store. And then finally they could go to the grocery store, but they couldn't buy nothing because the stores was empty. I realized that there was one thing I really failed my children, and that was I never taught them to grow, grow their food. Um, that really was a pain point for me. So I got serious at that point about learning to grow a garden. And I thank the good Lord, uh, he made the journey uh, very joyous and prosperous. Uh, first couple years was all about having fun. And we did, we had a lot of fun. Everybody got their own little box for the first couple years, a little four before box. And we did the square foot garden method. And we followed uh, Mel Bartholomew's instructions and we all did fairly well um, what happened was uh, we realized that it takes a lot more garden than that if you're going to live so I started beginning, get, beginning to get curious about how much would it take for me to grow all of our produce um, we haven't quite got there yet but we're steadily reaching the goal uh, this past summer proved to me that you can grow a lot of food in even a small space. Now, I know that I, I'm blessed. I don't have a lot of property, but I do have enough property to where we have a house and this building that we're in now and an area for the kids to play. And I still got um, about 26, something about 2,600 square feet of garden space. And now that's counting on the rows to walk between and everything like that. So um, it's, been, it's been plenty to get us started. And I think that with just a little more cultivation and a few more years of gardening, we'll be able to grow our own food. And I wanna encourage you to do the same if you can. We got everything we need, all the information. I'll provide links to all the resources in the description. But folks, it's really this simple. I start out making a little list. Now this is gonna be hard for me to show you, okay? But what I did was I wrote a list. At the very top of that paper, I put my average last frost date. Now, I've done this a few years, so I could have skipped a lot of this, but I asked myself, what did I do the first year that we really got serious about growing our garden so I can replicate it and show it to you? So that's what I did. So I wrote me a list of the vegetables. This is just some of the vegetables. It's not all of them. I didn't write all of them for the video. Onions, broccoli, carrots, sweet corn, cow peas, cucumbers, peppers, tomatoes, green beans, lettuce and potatoes and I went down that list and I started labeling which ones I need to start indoors and which one I need to start outdoors now for me I knew which one of these I was going to start indoors and which one I was going to start outdoors but if you look at your seed packets should have kept one out Let's see if I can grab one real quick here And some of these just aren't that good. Um, yeah, a lot of these are just saying, sow directly in the garden as early as the soil can be made fine and loose. Now, as far as my recommendation to you is, 
Um, I would want to know that when that ground got good and warm, or at least thawed and workable, like I said, there's cool season crops like that lettuce, that's, it's not going to matter. I'm not going to try to germinate no seeds when the ground is still cold. It, it just don't work. When I can start some seeds in nursery cups or these little solo cups or even cells, and I can let them grow in here for three or four weeks, and I can take them outside and plant some healthy transplants. Now, like I told you earlier, we're going to try to do those onions real soon because onions take a long time to grow. Going to have to get them started in here soon. That way they got plenty of time to, to develop to a good starter size. And then we're going to take them out there, put them in the ground. And hopefully uh, in, in the summer, we're going to have a good, a good harvest. What well, about midsummer? Um, but now my list includes dates. How many weeks did I need to start these seeds before I take them out there? And I'll use onions for an example. Eight to ten weeks before that last, that last frost. So I need to get them going in February. That's as late as I need to be waiting is in February probably the first week of February. Now, it's entirely up to you how long you want these to grow indoors. There's two things you gotta watch. The number one, the first thing is, the most important thing is can you grow plants that grow large? A, a tomato plant, for instance, grows really fast. Once you got that seed germinated, it it looks like it's going to grow slow, but it's a vine. Just to kind of let you know, when that seed sprouts, it's going to have these two little starter leaves. And those leaves are not true leaves. What happens is there's going to develop a first set of true leaves, and that's when we're going to start fertilizing. And once we start throwing that fertilizer to that stuff, I wish I'd have took pictures. I probably got pictures and I probably just archived on the storage device. But um, before we got our tomato plants out this year, these shells behind me, those tomato plants, every one of them were at least this tall. And you want them that tall because what you're going to do is you're going to plant them deep. One of the things about a, a tomato plant is anywhere that vine touches the ground, it's going to put on roots. So what we do is we dig a deep hole and we plant that thing down there as good as we can. And what it does, it gets your tomato plants with some good, strong roots that can get to that water. Um, a lot of people mess up. Uh, they'll buy these little bitty starter plants and they'll put them in the ground and there's nothing wrong with that. The problem with it though is those roots are not going to develop nearly the root structure as if you would plant it like I just told you we planted ours. So it just kind of gives you an edge up. Now, as far as broccoli, you know, we're going to plant that. That needs to be started six to eight weeks before that spring frost. And I can do two to three weeks before my last frost. Like I said, it's a, it's a cooler season crop. Can't do that with some of these others. So now, how do you get this information? Well, um, I recommended three books the other day. Those have been a great help to me. Um, seed packets are another good one. Of course, like we just seen, some of these seed packets, they don't give a lot of information. And it's information, especially beginning gardeners going to need. So I'd really encourage you to invest in at least those three books. Um, I, you know, we're just a little video YouTube channel. We're not trying to say nothing. I'm just trying to help you. But uh, that's what we did, and it helps. So now we got this list. You need to make your list. And then what I do is I create an Excel spreadsheet. And the reason I do that is it's got this information, but I separate it out a little bit clearer. I'll have the, the plant variety. 
I have when the when I need to start those seeds indoors, when I need to start those seeds outdoors or transplant outdoors. And then I'll do a little monthly running calendar. That way I can go out to where my last average frost date is, April 19th, and I'll mark that cell red. And that's the one I'll use to count back those weeks. I don't get too particular with it. I know some months got four weeks, some got five weeks. I don't get into all that. I just go four, eight, 12, whatever. And that's the way I do it. And it works really good. Now, the one thing I do have to tell you is that this is a science, but it's not an exact science because we don't control the nature. We don't control weather. Um, you can do all this work and a late freeze could still come and get you. So what I do is I grow plenty of extra. And most of you know, if you're watching this channel, you're probably a friend of mine and we give away plants. Um, the goal is to one day to, to uh, actually have a little nursery and to sell a few plants. I uh, really think that would be an enjoyable uh, source of income for me. I think it'd be a blessing to a lot of other people. But um, so we keep us a few extras just in case. But if you remember, I told you, if you stick around in the video, I was going to talk about ways to get out there quicker. And I've probably done told on myself, it's really simple. We make these really inexpensive hoop structures. I just go to Lowe's and I get me a 10 foot section of either half inch or three quarter inch uh, PVC pipe. And I will get me uh, some rebar. Now I buy rebar in very big sticks. I'm fortunate I got a truck with a ladder rack and we can tote, we can transport it that way. But I, I saw the rebar to about 12 to 16 inches long. And I'll put two in each corner and two in the middle of the bed. And I'll just take one end of that PVC pipe over top of that rebar, bend it around onto another piece. I'll go to the center of the bed and I'll do it again. I'll go to the far end and I'll do it again. Um, then I'll take me one more piece of PVC pipe. And this night I have to cut because I have eight foot, feet, eight foot beds and the sticks come in 10 foot. So what I do is uh, I don't, you can take screws, you can drill holes, you can do whatever you want. Um, I just get me some good zip ties and I do a cross around those bars, zip it up, and that's why I just throw some plastic over it. You can do all kinds of things to cover it up with that plastic. Uh, I, I typically get a, either a four mil or a six mil poly from the building supply. Um, one of these days I'm gonna invest in some growers plastic because it lasts a lot longer and it's not expensive. Uh, we just don't have any around here and when I get the notion to make one of these structures, I typically am not going to wait two or three days for an internet order to arrive. So I just go buy me some of that construction grade plastic. And that's what I do. In fact, this year we covered up seven beds like that with uh, everything from tomatoes to peppers, cucumbers. Um, I, I don't know what all we had out there. Uh, but we had a really wonderful year, a great growing season. And the only thing we had any trouble with uh, as far as the weather goes and the frost uh, was the cucumbers. But uh, we wound up still having a good year of uh, cucumbers. We grew some pickling, some Boston pickling cukes and some of them lemon cucumbers. Probably won't do those again. It wasn't, wasn't worth the trouble. They're too little. But uh, as far as the taste goes, they tell me they tasted just fine. But you know, if it... If you're trying to start your garden and you're unfamiliar with starting your seeds, I don't want you to get overwhelmed. It's not that big of a deal. You can be a little bit late. Uh, it's better to be a little late than a little early. I did say a little late. You don't want to wait too late. I know people that waited plumb on into June before they started getting their stuff planted and well, they didn't get a good harvest. Um, you can. But I'll tell you one of the tricks we do is we try to grow a lot of the vining varieties. And I know a lot of people have changed to the bush varieties and that's fine, but that stuff was made for little containers 
Uh, actually, it was adapted to containers, but it was designed for uh, these large operations. Uh, the way those things put on fruit and mature, they just send the harvester down through. They're all machinery now, and you know, it's a done deal. They plant some more, move on. So anyway, folks, I'll try my best to throw some of that footage in there for you, give you some links to these resources. That's all there is to it, to know when's the ideal time to get those seeds started. So I do hope that was a help to you, and I hope you have a, a great growing season. I know it's cold, but like I said, it's time to get started. It won't be too long, especially if you're going to do something like onions. You need to get those things started here real soon, just a month or so. So don't sit on your laurels too long, or you'll miss that ideal time. So folks, this is Michael from the Backyard Vegetable Gardening Channel, wishing you a great day. See you next time.